You know, I think, honestly, I think in the end, how does Putin end? I think someone in his own circle eventually will take him out. When that is, I don't know, but yeah. it, couldn't, it can't be soon enough. Uh, you, feel free to make comments, John, and then address that issue as far as how solid is Putin in his position. Um, well, there are certainly cracks. Uh, you're seeing a growing rivalry between private military contract companies like uh, Wagner Group and, Euro and Yevgeny Prigozhin. Um, interestingly enough, Gazprom is also starting their own little military uh, uh, group of their own uh, their corporate one, too. You're also seeing um, unhappiness in outlying parts of the Russian Federation, Karelia in the north, Dagestan and Buryat, where you're seeing those people from those areas taking a disproportionately large number of casualties. The Russian economy is starting to also take a hit because, you know, sanctions are a slow motion process. They're not instant. Eventually, the pressure is going to get uh, um, eventually. I agree with Michael. Somebody is going to have to probably from the FSB or the SVR is probably going to do it to, to remove him. But it'll be in conjunction with the military. But there's no sign of that at present because the Russians are doing a, a pretty effective job inside the Russian media information space, something I follow, you know, daily as a Russian speaker, uh, you know, they've actually really got the Russian people kind of behind this so far. But how long can that last, especially when Putin doesn't have anything to show for it, when his entire image and credibility depends upon being seen as a strong man and as credible? So that's why they're pushing so hard in Crimea right now, because the one-year anniversary has symbolic importance. And if they don't have anything to show for it, um, the cra those cracks will widen, Bob. Yeah, Michael, do you think, with, especially with the one-year anniversary coming up, that Putin will even move forward further in his relationship and partnership with China? There have been reports that U.S. experts are becoming more concerned about that relationship. I, th I don't think there's any question about it. I think everyone needs to be concerned about that. We spoke about it even when I came back from Ukraine after being on the ground there, that the larger, bigger picture than just what was taking place on the ground is this relationship that's continuing to grow with China. So, yeah, I think it's something that the United States needs to look more closely at. The world needs to be concerned about. Look what China's doing, you know, these balloons. You know, it's funny because now it's ironic. I shouldn't say it's funny, but it's it, it's ironic that now they're using balloons overhead. The Russians are, you know, to really confuse the radar yeah. and to lure, you know, to get them to use expensive SAMs yeah. and things like that to shoot yeah. them down. Well, you know. Uh, this way, they can then use missiles on them. So they use their use yeah. up their missile defense by confusing their radar, so to speak. Yeah. Um, there's, you know, there's another layer to this, Bob. Here and that is that China can only, you know, is looking at this, and they see a, a weakened West, if an emboldened Russia helps them in one way, but a crippled Russia that it starts to fragment upon ethnic lines, especially in the Soviet from the Russian Far East, um, the, especially the Stan republics where China is really growing their influence. China could end up turning a lot of the former. Soviet Union, even part of the Russian Federation today, into de facto colonies as they buy off local officials and seem to supplant the, the vacuum that Moscow is on the way to creating there. So uh, China, so we, we need to really think about what the end game here is, because if Russia flies apart, that presents a whole other set of problems, and that's leaving aside the issue of nuclear weapons in a bunch of different hands. Yeah, John, quickly before we wrap, um, going back to what President Biden was saying during his speech today, he specifically said we see competition, not conflict with China. Uh, just address that, because, again, that was just a couple hours ago. Yeah, this is really concerning because what China is doing in violating our sovereignty and those of uh, that of other countries as well, and that China's increasingly brazen behavior, President Biden's refusal to impose costs on China. Now, I get for intelligence reasons that they might have wanted to let the thing fly over the United States so they could watch it. There's an argument to be made there. But to not impose co real costs on China is concerning because that's a non-message message that Beijing will read in only one way, and that's fecklessness and weakness, which is, history tells us it only invites further aggression. Yeah, and, and Michael, the, the, we're seeing a new world order, if you no will. The, Russia and China are getting together on many fronts. Yes. Mm -hmm. So the, the, our, our opponent is getting bigger and more powerful. Now, China has the technology. China, China has the, 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 the uh, innovation. Sure. Uh, Russia has some resources mm -hmm. and a lot of people 
Yeah. Uh, d d but this is very dangerous for the West. And it's then extremely dangerous. I'm sorry dangerous. to interrupt, but also I Iran is also well, becoming part was, of that. I was going to actually going? say yes. that. I was going to say, let's not forget Iran plays in that little field as well. That's why they're sending drones over to the Russians. But to your point, Bob, you're 100% right. The United States is showing weakness right now. And that's what... It, it, look... That's what they're looking with, for. With China, they love to see that weakness. It emboldens yeah. them more than other countries. So we do have to take this very seriously. They're not our friends. Michael Grimm, John Jordan, thank you very much. More of American Agenda after this, folks.